Hey Doombots, Tony Skinjili here with a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time, just didn't have the chance. And now with some rumors going around about where certain characters are going to become available, I think it's time. I also think it's time because I don't think anyone else has talked about this publicly, um, but if I'm wrong, Fox Next hasn't heard. So here I am, just a guy, talking to Fox Next, trying to fix a problem. And that problem is the premium orb problem, the pop. So premium orbs, right? As far as you're concerned or anyone's concerned, they're just a way to get more character shards, you know? Great. They're tiny little gotcha capsules full of a random amount of random character shards that you may or may not need. And that's phenomenal uh, overall. That's not something that's particularly bad or good. It has no connotation at all. It's more of a surprise mechanic or an exciting moment where you can get something you want. You can get, technically, if I remember correctly, up to 50 of a character you want. And that's great. As a matter of fact, uh, in my free-to-play account, as many of you may know, I my first premium orb, I opened 50 Minerva Shards. Phenomenal. Eventually, it's not going to help me in the early game. Perhaps a character like Loki might have been more useful, but that's okay. Like, beggars can't be choosers, right? And this is free stuff, so why would it feel bad to get character shards in the game? Well, the first problem, I think we can all discuss, is that they cost... 450 cores and it takes a couple of days for the average player to get 450 cores two to four days depending on what else you're spending your your power cores on etc and you know that's the price they set do i think it's worth that many cores no but it doesn't matter what i think i just won't buy it right do you think it's worth that much well again Depends on how much money you have, or how many cores you have, or how willing you are, or how lucky you are. You may have been constantly opening good premium orbs, or you may subscribe to some tinfoil hat seed theory or another that tells you if you open an orb when six or seven characters on a full moon, on a Tuesday, real baseball stat level stuff happens, you can get a good pull. Great. It doesn't matter. What, what matters about premium orbs is that there are... As of right now, as of this video, 106 characters in the common drop. 106. That's a lot. But that you only have a 86.93% chance of pulling one of the 106. If you step up to the uncommon drop, oh, no still 106 characters so 99 percent chance that you're gonna get one of 106 total characters with a nice little one percent chance of that number dropping down to 74 so if you're really lucky with that one percent chance you might get one of 74 named characters but on average you might get 15 to 25 random minion shards or something along those lines the issue with premium orbs is a very simple one with very simple solutions there are too many characters for premium orbs to be sustainable sustainable meaning useful over time now it's one thing for a player to have a handful of characters at max level uh, it is another thing for a player to have most characters at max level or a player in my situation where regardless of how little money I've spent over the last X months, premium orbs, even though they're adding new characters, doesn't make them easier. Like it's great. They added a brand new character to a premium orb. Wonderful. But they didn't remove a character from the premium orb. So instead of now there being an option for me to be happier with what happens out of these uh, incentive to buy them or uh, an excitement, it's more of a depression mechanism in which I can open something that is more likely than not, more often than not, 
going to give me something that is of no value to me, considering that Ultimus orbs are like premium orbs, except a little bit better because you can always get Ultimus shards. We have an issue with the number of characters in premium orb. Quick solutions off the top of my head on how to fix the 106 and then 74 uh, potential numbers is to just split the orbs, make two different premium orbs take the same currency and put heroes in one or villains in the other, or split the orbs based on anything, origin, location, let players kind of cherry pick where they go, because a one out of 106% chance of pulling a specific character, that's, that's a lot. And even if you do have six characters that are of like you're interested in getting out of the premium orbs there's still a hundred that you're not and it doesn't matter if you get something you weren't looking towards that's the point of rng but if it's more likely exorbitantly more likely that you're not going to pull anything of value to you let alone the thing you want to pull it runs in we run into an issue like that these are almost unpurchasable and as they've gotten more and more characters when there was originally 70 or 80 characters it was one thing to imagine a new player coming in and dropping a hundred dollars and being like i'm just gonna open premium orbs and hope i get lucky or see what they give me of course and every premium orb especially for newer players free to play players even some middle like game players who are not quite seven starring still working on a bunch of different things you know every premium orb has an opportunity of of being great for them but it has the reality of being mediocre more often than not. And that takes away a little bit of the fun from a surprise mechanic. So that's one idea. Just split them up however you want. Put characters in different orbs and let the players decide where to spend their premium orb currency. Great. The other problem with premium orbs is right where I've left the screen. One two and three now one of these characters has been a premium orb exclusive for the entire game when there was 60 characters in a premium orb uh, a one in 60 chance uh, somewhat controlled maybe you know two in 60 chance of pulling the character you want was way better because when you saw it it, it did feel like you were progressing a little bit. It felt like, great, that was the lucky thing I got out of the premium orb. And for what it's worth, that's awesome to, to be able to say there's a chase character that I work towards. And then around the time that you added Thanos to the premium orbs as a premium orb exclusive, after, you know, there was an easy way for players to get him, once the game balanced out and Thanos became a usable character, there was closer to 100 characters in the premium orb. So no matter how high his drop rate was compared to the other people, I think most players would say that they didn't really get Thanos that often. Uh, he wasn't even the 15 drops. It didn't happen. And then without further ado, we have Minerva. Minerva's leading into the most important point. So many people, myself included, have been advocating the strength of Minerva for since the day she came out. So a year plus. Minerva's a phenomenal character. She was patently unfarmable for many, many, many months, and she still is, to this day, unfarmable, but she became a premium orb exclusive, uh, a character you can only get by opening premium orbs, which, again, is not inherently wrong or bad or deceitful or distasteful until you realize that as characters keep coming out, and are placed into premium orbs. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter what their increased drop rate is because there's increased drop rate among more characters. So I don't think any person here, or any person watching this video or anyone playing the game is going to in confidence say they have pulled Minerva twice as much as they've pulled any other character, considering the fact that they are roughly, not exactly, but roughly, twice the drop rate. I don't think they're going to say that about any of these characters. It's just not how probability works. That's not how it goes. So if you're going to add a new character as a premium orb exclusive, 
that drop rate has to go up a little bit. Uh, and I would look into the Ultimus Orb for inspiration. If, by some means, you decide to keep premium orbs the same way, you have multiple options. You can remove characters from them. Perhaps characters that have entered legacy orbs no longer need to be in premium orbs uh, because there's another option. Perhaps you do want to split them into different types, heroes, villains, or origin, or type, or, you know, any of the location, any of them. Maybe that works for you. Maybe making it all a currency. That could be great. But as long as you keep adding characters to premium orbs, it doesn't matter if you increase the drop rate of one and make it exclusive. By design, that's predatory. That's telling people that, well, you could try with all the free premium orbs you're capable of getting a week, yeah. 10, 15 maybe, depending on how well you blitz and do stuff. But no, you're going to have to buy that character because you don't have any control over it. If you want to do this, Fox Next, I don't think anyone would disagree that you need to make sure that characters that are exclusive to premium orbs are far more frequently occurring. If that means that you have to remove one of the pillars and replace it with these three characters in a number of shards, five, two, whatever, that's great. That's a great thing. I don't think many people would be that mad. If you want to say that every 10th premium orb someone opens, they are capable of guaranteeing one of the exclusives. Well, that's great. Even if you were to say every 10th premium orb, you're guaranteed a 50 drop. That's also phenomenal. I think that increases the amount of time people are willing to spend or work towards premium orbs. Uh, I think that you'll generate a little bit more sales in premium orbs if that's something that's interesting to you, but who's to say? And I think that it would be more rewarding for players every other week if they manage to open that 10th premium orb to see a 50 drop, even if that's a character they already have, they're now built in. And this is something called bad luck mechanics, and all good games have it, because when people get too much bad luck for too long, they stop playing. Premium orbs are broken. And they have been since there were about 80 characters in them. Premium Orb exclusives are even more broken. So if you are going to add a new character into Premium Orbs, or if you're going to redesign Premium Orbs, you need to make sure that the value of that new character being placed in the Premium Orb is worth it. Because Mr. Sinister being added to Premium Orbs, to me isn't going to help me get Mr. Sinister. It's not going to incentivize me to buy them. I'm not going to spend 450 cores. I'm not going to buy a pack that has premium orbs. It's not going to matter to me. Those are all just random things that come out. But if I knew that opening premium orbs, whether they be free or by spending, gave me a higher probability, a higher chance, or a guaranteed some chance of getting a character I probably want, I'd be more inclined to do so. But you guys let me know what you think. Do you think premium orbs are great? Do you think that, well, it's all RNG anyway, so it's totally fine? Do you think that Fox Next uh, is doing this intentionally to boost up sales of specific characters? Or do you think they're dumb and they don't understand how math works and they don't understand that increased probability of a larger pool is still decreased probability? It's up to you to decide but comment below let me know what you think let me know any changes you would make to premium orbs if you like any of the ones i've mentioned uh, and let me know who the absolute worst possible character they can add to premium orbs in the next i don't know couple of days would be in your mind as an exclusive but we can have that conversation on stream anyway have a good night have a great day i've been tony scongeli and i'll catch you guys later